Hello everyone, it's Miss Mika again. How are you all today? Hope you're doing good. And um, we're going to talk a little bit more about water today. Miss Greta did two awesome lessons. I love the Fred the Fish lesson. I always feel so sad for Fred at the end, but it's a good thing he's a sponge. And we can revive him and bring him back to life and everything's hunky dory, isn't it? So anyways, um, she talked a lot to you about polluting your surface water. So surface water is any body of water that you find on top of the surface. And actually a huge chunk of the earth is nothing but surface water. I think it's about 75% or better that is completely covered with water. Um, and only 1% of that I think maybe is actually fresh water. And the rest of it's either ice or salt water. So that is one reason that um, we spent so much time talking about keeping that surface water clean was so that, um, you know, we only had this little bit of fresh water that the whole world uses to cook with, to clean with, to, um, for your animals to drink and for us to drink. I mean, you think about how much we use water in a day-to-day -day life. You think about, you know, when you take a shower, when you wash your hair, when you brush your teeth, when you wash your clothes, when you cook, when you drink the water, when you water your animals, your pets and stuff that you have at home. Not including when, you know, the things you do when you're cleaning, like um, you might have to mop the floor or when you clean your bathtub out or something like that. We use water all the time, so it is so important to keep your surface water clean. But I want to talk to you today about another place where you find water. But it's not on the surface. Surface water is anything you can see, like creeks and lakes and ponds and the ocean and things like that. I'm going to talk to you about water today that's hidden. And you're probably sitting there thinking, what? There's water that's hidden? But some of you guys who have water at home that comes from these sources, you're going to know what I'm talking about, okay? There is water that is underground, okay? And that water that is underground needs to be clean just like the water on top, the surface water. And you may say, well, that's easy to do because it's underground and it's hidden, right? But we're going to see that we can even pollute the water that is under our feet. Okay, we know it's super easy to pollute the water on the surface. Miss Greta did an awesome uh, lesson with the watershed and with it raining and all that runoff running into your body of water. But just like that, that runoff getting into that body of water and making it dirty, we can also make the water that is underground dirty. Okay, so we're going to talk about this underground water. When it gathers up in pockets, we call that an aquifer. Okay, so now how do we know that that underground water is there? Okay, so a lot of us live outside of city limits and we live out in the county and we live off of highways and so we don't have city water. I don't have city water. Our water comes from a well. So most people have wells. There's still a few people who get their water um, for their house from a spring box. Um, I know I have some friends who have they get their water from a spring box. So a spring and a well are those two sources of water that is underground, okay? So the water gathers up underground called in these little pockets called aquifers. And so when you have a spring, that underground water, it rushes to the top and breaks out of the ground. So that's how we know there's water underground. But with a well, you have to dig down through layers of rock and dirt and you have to try to find that aquifer and tap down into it and then run pipe and uh, get a pump and all that stuff so you can pump your water out to get it into your house, okay? So how can, some people have to dig wells that are super deep, like sometimes they have to go 200 feet deep or they might even have to go 500 feet deep. So how in the world can we get water all the way down that far, 200, 500 feet, that is a long way. So how do we get water down in there? Well, we have to have layer of rock that are two things. The layer of rock has to be something called porous. Porous means that it has holes in it. Okay, so you might be thinking, mm, rocks with holes in it, that doesn't sound too sturdy, and here we are walking on it, but these holes are very, very tiny holes, okay? 
so the the rocks have to be porous they have to have tiny little holes in them tiny little cracks because without holes or cracks can water run through it no so we have to have those little tiny holes and cracks so that water can run down through it now not only does it have to be porous but it has to be another word you're gonna sound so smart by the end of this lesson okay porous has holes in it the second thing it has to be is something called permeable okay permeable means that that liquid can move easily through that rock okay so help us understand the word permeable a little bit better so let's imagine that your teacher stands at the door of their classroom and she sprays some Lysol or some Febreze or whatever she wants to spray to make it um, smell better okay so when your free, when your teacher first sprays that that smell is only right there around where either he or she sprayed it but our air is permeable that means that gases can flow easily through the air and eventually that smell will wind its way through the classroom and get to where you're sitting at and reach your nose and you can smell it then okay that's what it means to permeate permeate means that it moves through easily okay so this rock has to be porous and it has to be permeable. So water has to seep down through it and it has to move down through it and it'll eventually find a place where it can gather and make this thing called an aquifer, okay? So we have all of this water. Now, where did the water come from? It came when it rained and the rain hit the ground and it seeped into the ground. And then under the ground, you have all these layers of rock so when it gets to a layer of rock that is porous and permeable, it will continue to wind its way down through there and it'll make a little pocket of water, okay? So, can that water get dirty once it gets underground? It absolutely can, okay? And we're gonna talk about that here in just a minute, but we're gonna build an aquifer and then we're gonna talk about how you can make it dirty, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is everybody's going to have a cup my cup is glass yours is not keep you safe okay all right but everybody's gonna have a glass all right now everybody is also going to have some cookies all right now you're going to take these cookies and you are going to crumble them over your glass okay so we don't make too big of a mess all right now this cup is, see don't do that <laughs> this cup is a hole in the ground okay now when i put my cookies in here and i crumble them up don't they kind of look like rock they kind of remind you of that and you know i used oreo cookies and look right there I think they've got some little bitty holes in them they're really hard to see but I think they might be porous and have a few little holes in them so they're porous now is it going to be permeable that means will liquid run easily through it well if you look at my cookies they're not packed in there really good are they looks like there's a lot of space a lot of air in between it so I think that that means it's permeable that when I put some water in here that my water is going to move easily through this okay so my Oreo is my rock and my rock is porous and permeable okay now you also have a Sprite so when you open it up you're going to pour just enough Sprite over it to cover your rock Okay, just enough to cover that rock right there. All right, and so you can see that this is porous and this is permeable because the water went straight through it and gathered in a little pocket. So that made my aquifer, didn't it? All right, so over that little pocket of water, that aquifer we have, you may have some more layers of rocks and they might be packed in just a little bit better. So we'll We'll put a few more rock in there, okay? Cover up our pocket of water, all right? 
So then on top of all those layers of rock and our little pocket of water that's right there, we have the ground, right? And so everybody's gonna have a little cup of ice cream. You're going to take your spoon and you are going to put your ice cream into your cup. Now I have covered my ground. All right, so, so far, my water that's down in there is clean. I know it's Oreos and it might get a little dirty and stuff. Usually we use ice, but um, ice is just really hard to get to you guys right now since we're doing virtual classes. So we're just gonna pretend a little bit. But my water that's down in there is fairly clean, okay? So I could dig a well right now and I could pump that water out and I'd have me some good clean water. But we're going to see what happens when we pollute, okay? So also in your little kit, you're going to have different kinds of sprinkles. Now, these sprinkles are going to be different things. Let's imagine that somebody is um, changing the oil in their car. And you're supposed to take your oil and put it in a container and take it to the dump. And there is a big, huge, round drum that's got a little shed over it for used motor oil. That's where you're supposed to take your oil because they will take that oil and they will recycle it, okay? Instead of having to pump oil out of the ground to get new oil, they're gonna take that and they'll recycle it. But there's a lot of people who when they change the oil in their car, they just pour the oil on the ground. And a lot of people think that that doesn't hurt anything. Well, you saw in Miss Greta's lesson that oil can leak out and when it rains it can cause runoff not only that though but that oil can also what do we have under here we have groundwater don't we so that oil we're going to see here in just a minute is going to seep down into our aquifer and it's going to make it dirty so what else could we have that's pollution you could have the motor oil you could have people spraying roundup to kill weeds you could have people spraying bug spray around their houses and all of that stuff is going to just sit on top of your ground, okay? So you're going to take your sprinkles and you're just going to put them on top of your ground. That could be that oil, it could be that pesticide, it could be um, the herbicide, the Roundup, it could be litter, um, any kind of thing, any kind of liquid that you're going to pour out on the ground, any kind of powder, and it's just going to sit there, okay? But now what we're going to do, in your pack, you're going to have some colored liquid, okay? Now, it's actually Sprite with food coloring in it, but we're going to pretend that it has rained, and not only that, but this is going to be acid rain, Okay, so how do we get acid rain? Acid rain happens when there's pollution in the air, and then when it rains, that rain mixes with that pollution. And um, water has a, a pH scale that's telling whether it's acid or a base. pH or water is neutral at seven, okay? But when it picks up that pollution, it's going to make it more like an acid. And you guys have heard about acids. We know that vinegar is an acid, and if you get it on your skin, it might burn you a little bit. You might hear somebody talk about battery acid, and if that gets on you, that'll burn your skin. It might even burn your clothes if it's an it's a very strong acid. So that pollution is going to mix with that rainwater, and it's going to make acid. Now, that acid may not hurt you, okay? but it can hurt animals because animals are a lot smaller than we are. We're a lot bigger. And so the bigger the organism, the bigger the living thing is, the more pollution it can handle before it gets sick. But think about like a little snail or a little lizard or a teeny tiny little minnow, okay? If it gets acid rain, what's gonna happen to those guys? It could make them sick or even kill them, couldn't it? Okay, so we're going to pretend that it's rained and it's acid rain, but we're also going to see what happens when that rain picks up all of this pollution that's on top of the ground, and we're going to see if our aquifer stays clean. Okay, so 
here comes the rain. We're gonna watch it. It may take a while. Can you see right in there where it slipped down? It already slipped down. That happened really quick. I didn't even see that. I guess it happened when the ice cream floated to the top. But there, oh, right there you can see where it's moving around and trying to move its way down into our aquifer. So our aquifer that had nice clean water in it, because when we put the Sprite in it was all nice and clean, wasn't it? When we had that aquifer with all that water, when it rained, it picked up all of that pollution and carried it down through the aquifer with it. Okay, so it may not have carried everything. Some of it may be still stuck in the, in the rock and stuff, but we definitely have some dirty water, okay? Now, when surface water gets dirty, it can be cleaned. Okay, when water goes through the water cycle, and, and you guys who might be in third and fourth grade, you've heard about the water cycle. When it rains, we call that precipitation, and that surface water has gathered on the, on the uh, lakes and creeks and all that, the sun comes out, and the sun warms the water, and it causes the water to turn into a vapor or a gas. And we call that condensation or I'm sorry, evaporation. We call that evaporation. Oops, sorry. Okay, so the sun comes out and it's gonna warm up that body of water and it's gonna cause that water to turn into a vapor and turn into, and it's gonna evaporate up into the sky, okay? Now, when all those little water droplets that evaporated are up in the sky, they're going to gather together, they cool off a little bit and they're going to do something called condensation, okay? And they're going to form a cloud. Okay, so all these little water droplets have cooled down now, they've gathered together, they've made a cloud, and these clouds are going to get so heavy with these little water droplets that the water will return to the earth again as precipitation. Okay, so that cycle, because it'll just start all over again, the water will heat up the surface water and make the water evaporate and all that stuff, and it'll go up and make a cloud, and then it'll get heavy, and it'll rain again, and it just keeps going in a circle. Okay, it never stops. So that water cycle, that precipitation, evaporation, condensation, each time surface water goes through that, it's going to start cleaning itself very, very slowly. And Miss Greta told you about the Champion Paper Company in North Carolina that had polluted the Pigeon River. That was a long time ago. So water has to clean itself. And even though that happened a long time ago, there are still traces of that, those pollutants in the Pigeon River. It's not as bad as it was, but there's still some in there. Well, groundwater, can the sun come out and heat this stuff up? It's underground. My ground's on top here. So it can't get warmed up from the sun, can it? So how's my groundwater gonna get clean? It's not, is it? The only thing that's gonna help clean it is when it passes through layers of rock and if it passes through tree roots and plant roots and stuff, it will help clean it. But if it gets dirty in this aquifer, it's just gonna be dirty. And when you pump it out, you're gonna have dirty water. And who wants to drink dirty water? Who wants to take a bath in dirty water? That's just nasty, isn't it? So we have to be very mindful, not only to keep our surface water clean, but we have to be very mindful to keep this groundwater that's in this aquifer, we have to keep it clean as well. Cause if this gets dirty, it can't clean itself. There's no water cycle for it to go through to cleanse itself, okay? So we need to be very careful to not put anything on the ground that we wouldn't want in our water. If you don't want to drink Roundup, don't spray Roundup on, uh, on the ground. If you don't want to drink fertilizer, then don't put fertilizer on the ground. If you don't want to drink motor oil, then don't put motor oil on the ground because all of the stuff that you put on the ground is going to end up in your aquifer, especially if you drink well water and spring water, okay? So if you want to have clean water to drink, don't put anything on the ground that you wouldn't drink yourself, okay? All right. Now, the last step in your pack, you have a straw. Now, I don't have a straw today because um, 
I'm trying to be way healthier and not eat ice cream and cookies. So I'm not eating mine today. <laughs> um, that makes me very sad because I really like this dessert. It's really good. But anyways, in your pack, you have a straw. So we're going to pretend that we did not pollute our aquifer and we're going to pretend that you are a well drilling rig and you're going to take your straw and you are going to dig a well through the ground and tap into that aquifer and then you get to eat and drink your aquifer all up. And that is a nice treat for Miss Greta and me and we hope that you enjoy it, okay? But we hope that you also remember to keep your water supply clean, whether it's groundwater or whether it's the surface water, okay? We hope you have a great day and we'll see you later. Bye.